the omenry, drew their swords and advanced towards the stage. I heard one of them shout, Damn you, I'll reform you! The cavalry began slashing their sabres, cutting and slaying all before them. On a sunny day in August 1819, 60,000 men, women and children converged on an open space in Manchester known as St Peter's Fields. Many of those who arrived there were workers from the cotton industry and they carried with them homemade flags which showed their support for political reform and an extension of the franchise. The headline attraction that day was the stirring voice of Henry Orator Hunt. Hunt was known as the champion of the people because of his leading role in the campaign for universal suffrage. He demanded the right to vote for all men and all women. Many ordinary people at this time were frustrated because they had no say in how they were governed. By meeting on St Peter's Fields, the demonstrators hoped they could influence government and bring about a change for the good. However, what should have been a peaceful reform meeting quickly turned into a bloody massacre. For Manchester's elites, the sight of large numbers of working men and women marching arm in arm was extremely alarming. Some wealthy inhabitants feared that the demonstration could turn into a rebellion. The magistrates of Manchester, who were responsible for public order, remembered very clearly the French Revolution of 1789 and the violent overthrow of Louis XVI which followed. They did not wish to see a repeat of this in Britain, nor did they want to see a reform of Parliament. Manchester's magistrates were, in fact, staunch supporters of Lord Liverpool's Tory government. They were strongly opposed to granting voting rights to the uneducated masses, and they firmly believed that democracy was dangerous. Once Henry Hunt had arrived at the meeting and had begun his speech, the magistrates decided to act. They requested the support of the Manchester Yeomanry Cavalry and the 15th Regiment of Dragoons, professional soldiers, in order to arrest Hunt and break up the meeting. The Yeomanry consisted of uniformed local businessmen. They were hostile to the reformers and they had sharpened their swords in preparation for the meeting. Charging on horseback while slashing their sabres, the Yeomanry attacked the crowd, causing injury and confusion. In all, 15 people were killed and over 600 were injured. The radical press likened the bloodshed to the recent Battle of Waterloo and journalists dubbed the meeting the Peterloo Massacre. In the short term, Peterloo was disastrous for the reformers. Lord Liverpool's government was spooked by the scale of the Peterloo meeting and they responded by passing the six acts. These new laws banned all mass meetings, forbade the carrying of flags and limited the circulation of cheap newspapers. After being arrested at the meeting, Henry Hunt was jailed for two years, along with several other reform leaders. In the aftermath of Peterloo, the government showed they were strongly committed to the suppression of the reform movement. In the medium term, however, Peterloo did contribute significantly to political change. People of all classes were appalled by the bloodshed seen during the Manchester Massacre and public opinion quickly turned against Lord Liverpool's government. Many middle class commentators believed the demonstrators had gained the moral high ground at Peterloo and as a reaction to the massacre, a number of Manchester's cotton merchants and factory owners joined the movement for reform for the very first time. These liberal, middle-class men made their case for political change in the pages of the Manchester Guardian, a newspaper which was set up by John Edward Taylor in 1821. The public response to Peterloo was therefore an important factor in the build-up to the Great Reform Act, for it was only under the pressure of respectable public opinion that Parliament was persuaded in 1832 to grant voting rights to a larger proportion of British men. In the long run, those who died at Peterloo were often hailed as martyrs in the cause of liberty and democracy. After the Reform Act, it was the Chartists who continued the struggle for working class rights. They looked back to Peterloo as an early battlefield in their ongoing campaign. In Lancashire, Chartist activists met every year on the 16th of August to read the names of the dead and to recall the sacrifices made at Peterloo. In the late 19th and early 20th century, socialists and independent Labour Party leaders also referred back to 1819, claiming Peterloo as the birthplace of the modern Labour movement. Even today, Labour politicians, left-wing journalists and political activists 
recognised the bravery of the Lancashire cotton spinners who risked their lives and liberty in order to stand up for free speech and democracy. <laughs>